We've started Lesson 2 in our summer packet on the uh, arrangement of electrons around an atom. I'm on the bottom of page 3 of our uh, note pack and uh, it reads, There are three general rules that guide us when writing electron configurations. And they are as follows, the Aufbau principle, the Pauli exclusion principle, and Hund's rule. We'll need to copy each of these into our notes and just try to understand what they're guiding us into. Now when I say electron configuration, to clarify, it's giving an address to every electron found in any one of the atoms, giving you a very specific uh, street number, um, it, 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 city, zip code, anything that would allow you to identify where an electron resides at any particular moment in time. That's what's known as the electron configuration, describing the arrangement of electrons around an atom's nucleus, the electron configuration. The three simple rules to describe this process, the Aufbau rule, and these are rules, or even though they're said principles, but these are rules that we follow when addressing electrons. The Aufbau principle states, when electrons enter the lowest energy level first, fill the lowest energy levels first before placing electrons in a higher energy. The Pauli exclusion principle. An atomic orbital may describe at most two electrons and they must spin in opposite directions. The Aufbau principle. Enter the lowest energy level first. That means to me I gotta start filling with 1s first, closest to the nucleus. When it's full I start with the 2s. When it's full, I go to the 2p. When it's full, I go to the 3s. And I keep placing electrons to reach the number of electrons I need to address for each individual atom. Now, the atomic orbital and the Pauli exclusion principle. Recall that those orbitals, you sketched these in the previous lesson. The s with one orbital. The p's with three different spatial orientations, three different orbitals. The D's with their 5 and the F's with their 7, those are called orbitals, the spatial orientations that electrons reside in. At most, each one of those individual orbitals can hold two electrons. One spins up, one spins down. Some people say one spins clockwise, one spins counterclockwise. But since electrons have like charges, they're going to be moving to create as much distance between themselves as possible. And the third rule says Hund's rule. When electrons occupy orbitals of equal energy, one electron enters each orbital until all orbitals contain one and they all must have parallel spins. Let's make sense. If Hund's rule is followed, let's just take the P's. The P's have three different spatial orientations denoted as Px, P sub Y, and P sub Z. Those are energy, those are orbitals of equal energy. There's a vocabulary word to mean that. It's called degenerate. Degenerate means of equal energy. One electron in the Px, the next in the Py, the third in the Pz, all spinning the same way. Then I go back and give a partner, placing in at most up to two electrons in each one of our orbitals. The Aufbau principle, the Pauli exclusion principle, and Hund's rule allow us to predict the arrangement of an electron for any particular atom. Now let's make sense of that with this diagram. This is a powerful visual. At the top of this pyramid, at the top of this electron configuration pyramid is the lowest energy level first. Notice it's a 1s sublevel. I'm putting my cursor at the top of this pyramid. I'm going to follow the diagonal line until I reach the end. I come back and I follow the diagonal line. I hit the end, I come back to the top and keep following the diagonal line. And let me read this to you. Giving meaning to the Aufbau principle. We just wrote it, the Aufbau. Let me reread it. Electrons enter the lowest energy level first. The lowest energy level is the 1s. 
the next energy level of lowest energy is the 2s. The next energy level would be 2p followed by 3s. I am not reading across a row, I am following the diagonal line. That's helping me follow Aufbau's principle. Now let me clarify, look at this. After 3s fills, follow the arrow, 3p, 4s. 4s fills before a 3d. 3d, 4p, 5s. 4d, 5p, 6s. 4f, 5d, 6p, 7s. 5f, 6d, 7p. This is a critical moment in your lesson. You should pause the video and repeat in your head the order with which electrons arrange themselves around the nucleus. The diagonal lines represent the Aufbau principle. I must fill the lowest energy level first. I must fill the 1s orbital. When it's full, I then place electrons into the 2s. When it's full, I start placing them into 2p, followed by 3s. Fill the lowest energy level first. The Aufbau principle are the diagonal arrows. Pauli exclusion. At most, each orbital can hold up to two electrons with opposite spins. That means the 1s orbital can hold up to two electrons. We would write that with a little superscript after the s. 1s raised to the second power, if you will, 1s2. When those two electrons are placed, I start filling the 2s up to two electrons, 2s2. Since the p's have three different orbitals, three spatial orientations, each one can hold up to two, up to a maximum of six. I would write that as 2p6, 3s squared, 3p6, 4s squared, 3d10, 4p6, 5s squared. This visual is very powerful. Take your time and understand it. When ready, proceed to the next slide. Here's the same visual presented in a different way. This puts the superscripts on that we were reading on the previous slide. You follow the yellow brick road when placing the number of electrons. The first energy level has one sublevel. It can hold up to two electrons, 1s squared. When the 1s squared orbital is filled, we come back to the top. Notice where we hit next. 2s squared. It, let's make clear, the second energy level has two sublevels, an s and a p-shaped cloud. The s has one orbital. Each orbital holds up to two electrons for 2s squared. The superscript denotes the maximum number of electrons before it's filled. 2p6. There are three spatial orientations for a p-shaped cloud. Each one of those hold up to two electrons for a total of six. 3s squared. I then fill 3p6, 4s squared. 3d10 is of higher energy than 4s squared. 4s fills before the 3ds, and so forth. Spend some time with this visual. Make sure it makes sense. I'm going to pause the video here and I'm going to insert some examples.